Now, the Irish soccer team played away to the Netherlands on Saturday night. It was their last game in their endeavours to qualify for the European Championship finals next summer. It's been a terrible experience for the players and uh, the coaches, Stephen Kenny in particular. It may well be his last competitive game as coach of the Irish team. But the question on everyone's mind now, uh, who cares about the game here, is where are we? Why are we in such a bad state? And I'm joined now by John Giles to discuss this. John, one of our greatest players ever, one of the world's greatest players ever, and the person who for seven years managed Ireland, took us out of the dark ages and created, you know, and gave debuts to people like Liam Brady, David Leary, Mark Lawrence, and great players that we had back in the day. And of course, John himself was one of the greatest of them all. John, thanks very much for joining us. No bother, Raymond. You've watched this terrible story unfold. Like me, I think you, at the start, uh, welcomed Stephen Kenny's appointment. Yes. We were both sort of rooting for him. The results are terrible, John. What did you feel when you were watching on Saturday night and when you thought about Liam's comments? I think we discussed it last week. When his last gig on RTE, he said, I should just say that this is the worst group of players in terms of ability that I've seen in my lifetime. And Liam's lifetime is, I think, around 67 years. He wasn't wrong, John, was he? No, I think I think he was. Uh, Stephen was unfortunate in, and managers can be. I mean, and what they take over. Yes. Uh, you know, if you go back to to Jack's time, for yeah. example, and that's stuff not that long ago. Jack inherited a great group of players. Yes. And the qualifications changed at that particular time as well for Jack. Yeah. Uh, but. Like he, he did a tr- terrific group of players. I mean, when you t- look at what Stephen took inherited, yes, there was there was he had to do an awful lot of work, I mean, and he's done an awful lot of work. Yeah, and I think it will help whoever takes over that they're actually inheriting something. Yes. So it was a very difficult job for Stephen to go. And 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 in football, as you know, I mean, it's a results game. Yep. You know, you have to be, you have to be qualifying. You have to, you know, because the, the supporters get impatient. Everybody gets impatient if you're not, if you're not doing it. So I think that's the the situation that Stephen was in and is in now. So I yeah. mean, I, I think he 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 will finish now. And uh, to be honest, now I mean, I couldn't tell you who I would pick to take over. Right, and there's uh, Lee Carsley played forty games for Ireland, John. Yeah, he's coached uh, the England under twenty one team to win the European Championship last year, which is the first time England have ever done that. Uh, surprisingly, and he would be my favourite. Uh, but other people talking about Steve Bruce, who I think we both admire. He's managed a lot of clubs in the Premier League. He's a great player for Manchester United. He's managed in the Championship, and he's very experienced. But just for the moment, to stick to, I suppose, one of the fundamental truths about football, you do really need players, don't you? I mean, Of course. Eh? That, yeah. You can't, no matter how good you are as a coach. And it was very striking after the match the other night. Matt Doherty was interviewed and a couple of other players. Matt Doherty was very eloquent. He spoke highly of Stephen in every respect. He said the training has been great. The lads back in 100%. So there was no sense of, you know, begrudging. This was a full-on endorsement by a very experienced player who's played for, among others, uh, Mourinho and, and Conte at Spurs. I mean, he is a great pro, Matt, and he wasn't bullshitting. No, uh, I, th- I think he, the, the players, from what we can see, I mean, and that's a, an endorsement because he he played with him for for a few years. Uh, I think Stephen did the best he could yeah. with what he had. I mean, yeah. and if, you, if you're not winning matches, then obviously you're going to you're going to be in trouble. And uh, that's the situation with Stephen now. Uh, I think he did the best he could. I think he brought young players on, uh, young players because there weren't established players there like 
Jack Hart, Jonathan Hart, and I had as yes. well. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then Tony Dunn and Don Givens and Liam came into the team. Yeah. You know, these young, the young players came in as well. As well. Yeah. So Stephen, he didn't have that. No. He didn't have that. He didn't have the experienced players to do what what needs needs to be done. And if you don't have the players, you know, managers can't perform miracles. I mean, sometimes it looks like they perform miracles yeah. because they get get results that nobody expects them to do or to get. Uh, but but Stephen, unfortunately, didn't have, wasn't in that situation. Yeah, now the, the question that arises, John, is why are we not producing the players that we used to produce? The John Giles, the Liam Brady's, David O'Leary. We did have, of course, Ray Houghton, uh, John Aldridge, uh, who we got, you know, on the granny rule, and we also got Mark Lawrenson on the granny rule, but with Paul McGrath. And there's something wrong with the game here. It's at schoolboy level and all the way up. There is no Liam Brady. There is no John Giles. There isn't even a name of Dunphy. <laughs> I mean, I, by that I mean, I, well, I was able to play alongside you guys, that, and I was only a journeyman from Millwall for most of my career, but I could, I could play a little bit. These lads don't seem to have that. I mean, I take J- Josh Cullen. He's playing for Burnley now, John. And he's played every single game. He's been captain of the team too. He's a good lad, but he he can't play. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, he's do, if he's doing okay, I mean, you, I mean, you can't play at international level. Obviously, he's doing the job as a Burnley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Burnley, we, we don't. Yeah, we don't have the, the players that we had. You, you're you're asking me why do we not have the players? Yeah. My my answer is I don't actually know. I mean, yeah. I don't know if there's as many England players, for example, coming into the game uh, as, as as much as they did because there's so many foreign players in the. In the Premier League, League, as yes. we know, yeah. in 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 the Irish situation, the, in, I haven't I, I I haven't been near the schoolboy uh, no place in, anywhere in, in Dublin. I don't know what it is. Whether there's there's more, uh, I think I think generally there's definitely more distractions from kids playing now yeah. than than ever before. I, yeah, and, and it was a street you know, game, and you can't play on the streets. Anymore. Exactly. Th- that's for sure. Yeah, that's a biggie. I mean, that's where yeah. you start playing. I mean, you know, that's where yeah. all the players started playing. Uh, you know, they, 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 and, they, and, and it was very, very skillful if, if somebody wasn't t- coming out to kick you off the street yeah. and get away with the ball. But uh, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening in England in regarding the, the production uh, of players. Um, but I, I think in England as well is one of the big things is that you can't play on the streets, I mean. Yeah. You know, that's one of the big things because if you look back on all the players that you mentioned, whether it was Liam Brady yep. and David O'Leary and Frank Stapleton, yep. yourself, myself, we all played on the street. Yeah. You know, now times have changed in a big way. I know because the kids now are, they have a television, they can sit and watch the television and do whatever they want to do themselves. So my answer to you is I, I don't really know, apart from what we've been talking about, which there's, there isn't as many kids playing on the streets as they used to. And that, that used to be the start. Now, the, I think there are facilities there now um, better than the, they were, certainly were in our day. Yeah. Uh, but the, 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 is, it, I don't know what the, 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 the final answer is to your to your question. Well, I think England are suffering with it. Wales are, Scotland. Look at Scotland, Damon. Yeah. You know, like you look at the players they produced over the years. Yeah, but know? they've got a lot of Premier League players. They're going to the Euros finals. And, you know, England have people like Phil Foden, uh, Young Grealish, and they have got top quality players. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, but they have a big, bigger selection than we have. Yeah. You know, they always had. I mean, we've, we've only got four and a half, what is it, four and a half million yeah. you know, people in, in the country, you know. We, we, and we always did well to produce. And, and the, 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 uh, the, the fact, the fact that the players could qualify for us, I mean, at that particular time was huge. Yeah. You know, I mean, if look, you, 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 you know, all the players that we had in, in, in that qualified for us. Uh, you know, they could have, well, they would, a lot of them could have played for England, I'm sure. Yes, Mark, but, uh, Mark Lawrence uh, certainly would have been an England player, and you got him 
Because you got a tip off from Alan Kelly, the late Alan Kelly, who was just. Well, it, it was it was amazing. I mean, how we yeah. got him. I'll, I'll just do, do it quickly. We, we we had a match on a Sunday. We used to play on a Sunday, yes. and we we struggled for players because they, 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 it was an automatic release. Yes, thought the managers wouldn't let the players come off, so we were struggling to play on the Sunday. And Alan Kelly was was my assistant, uh, and he said, "Well, there's a, there's a lot of Preston here." He said, "He won't let you down." He said, he's only 18, 19. He said, well, he went, that was Mark Lawrence. Yeah. So Mark Lawrence, in those days as well, Eamon, if he played for us as he did, he qualified for us. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You know, we lost two players. We, we, lo we lost uh, Grealish. Yeah, and, uh, and Declan uh, Rice. Uh, Rice. Yeah. You know, they, 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 you know they, they, with the times have changed in that particular way. So that's how we got Mark Lawrence. And, of course, the, the England manager later on went mad when he, when he found out that we had qualified him. And he only played in a friendly match. Yeah. And he was a terrific player. It was much <laughs> easier to qualify the players yeah. then than it is now. Now, I think you can replicate. I, I think this is what they've done in England in the academies. They, they're signing players now. Uh, I mean, Liam was telling me at Arsenal, they signed them when they're eight and nine. Put yeah. them in academies. They're playing with the cream from all the districts, say, in London or uh, anywhere. I mean, they're bringing kids from Manchester to London and vice versa and all that. You get them in that environment at that age. And, you know, that young lad at Arsenal, Saka, and Ketia, who was there when Liam, Liam found him. He's only a young lad now. I think Liam found him. Before he was 10, he scored a hat trick in the Premier League two weeks ago. And this is the sort of what we don't appear to be producing. I mean, Saka is, is English. Look at him. He's a top class player, John. Got all the talent. He's in the England team. He's in the Arsenal team. W what would you say to the idea that we get our players, we identify the best talent earlier and we create academies where they can play against each other, the best playing against the best, with some good coaches. Well, that would be the ideal thing. I don't know what, I don't know if that's happening at the moment. It's not. Uh, in, in Ireland. And, and, and the, well, the thing is in Ireland as well, Eamon, you wouldn't, the Arsenal situation that Liam had, yeah. right, the Arsenal situation, there'd be very, very few clubs in Ireland that could do that. Maybe Shamrock Rovers. Yes. I don't know. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine that all the clubs have the setups that Arsenal and, and Manchester United and all the big clubs in England have. No. To to get these uh, training situations, they'd have to go to England as they've done in the past, Damon. Yeah, well, you, you can't, can't go to England now since Brexit, John. You can, you have to be eighteen. Well, from well, that to those blow. Yeah, but I didn't actually know that. I should have known that. I think you told but, me that before. Yeah. But if they can't go, I mean, who's going to do, you know, they, they, but, but they can go to, clubs. well, let me put this idea to you, John. Go on then. They can go to European clubs. European clubs? Yeah. Yeah. They can go to PSG, they can go, but I don't suppose they have a scouting system here. But there are things that can be done. The funding could be taken care of by the government. Um, the FEI lost a lot of funding last week because they wouldn't have 40% of the board membership as women. Uh, women, they voted it down and they lost subsidy from the government. I mean, it's crazy stuff, mad stuff. Uh, so we don't have any structures here. That's the point that I'm making to you. Now, obviously, you live in... Well, no, I agree with you, but it's it's difficult to get it, Eamon. If the, 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 well, the big structure we've had over the years, you went to England, I went to England, yep. Liam Brady went to England, yep. and, that, and you say, we can't do that. Yep. That's, that's, that's a huge situation. I mean, again, if we go back, if we go back in our time, I mean, if you couldn't go, I couldn't go, what, what, would, what would we be doing, you know? Uh, sweeping the streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that was always the English clubs we were going yeah. to, and if you, most of the players that we have uh, are, are coming, and, and if they're usually if there's outstanding players in the League of Ireland, they go to they, they went to England, and, and in my opinion, would still go to England today. It's, it's much more difficult, I think, for them to go to Bayern Munich yeah, and, yeah. and all yeah. these great clubs, you know. Yeah, I, Evan Ferguson is the standout talent, I suppose, that we've um, produced or uh, realised we had in the last few years. Now, he played for Bowes in the League of Ireland when he was 14, John. Comes from a footballing yeah. family. 
England have tried to poach him because there's some connection that would qualify him to play for England, but he said, no, I'm Irish and I'm playing for Ireland. Now, I, he's, I'm not sure if he's 18 or 19, but I do have a feeling he was over there before he was 18. So I wouldn't be 100% certain. But the point I, I want to sort of make is, is there something we can do here to identify earlier who our most promising young players are, get them into an academy, get them playing regularly against players of their own quality and improve matters. And I, th- I think it can be done, I mean, if you have the finances to do it. Yeah. As you said there early on, they're not, they're not given the finances now unless, the, unless it's done in a certain way. Well, if it's done in a way that they want it to be done, it usually doesn't work. Yes. You know, that's that's the problem. Of course, we, of course we'd, we'd have a better chance if we had top coaches, really top coaches, and, and, they, and they, would, they, they had these kids from a young age. But if the finance is not there, you're not going to have them. Uh, I mean, that, 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 ha- that happened with us where we didn't need it. We, you went to Manchester United when you were yep. 15. I went to Manchester United when I was 15. That's, but as you say, we can't do that now. No. So all the good coaching has to be done on, at, at, at home. Yeah. But if they're not going to finance it, we don't have the finances for it. We've yeah. no chance of doing it. Now, Stephen, we know Stephen Kenny inherited very little. And uh, David McGoldrick then, who was one of the quality players he had up front, retired before a ball was kicked in Stephen's era. But he inherited nothing, and you can see that. He's capped 26 young players and some of them, I think, have done really well. Ogbeni, for example. I think this guy, Nathan Collins, who's gone from Wolves down to Brentford and has scored a great goal at the Aviva a couple of years ago, but I think it went to his head a bit. He got sent off for a bad tackle when he was playing for Wolves. He's at Brentford now, John, and there's a very good coach there, Thomas Frank, and I think he will be a proper centre-half. He didn't play well at all the other night and was mixed up with the goal. He was in the mix-up for the goal. Bazunu, the goalkeeper, very, very good, I think. Oh, he's brilliant, then. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, has a great yeah. attitude. Mm. Then you go down and you look down the list, you come to Evan Ferguson, yes. But there's mm. some of them, no. And compared mm. to what? And this is the sort of bind we find ourselves in. All the time the comparison is what we did in the past. In your era, in Jack's era, but the one thing that's changed is the players. We're not, we're not producing well, well, players. Well, one of the big cha- changes, I mean, as you said, and I'll go back to it again, if they can't go to England until they're 18. Mm. Now, if you, if you look at all the players that you were talking about in the yes. past, yourself included, Liam Brady, Frank Stapleton, and all, they all went to England at 15. I mean. yep. And boy, do you learn. All of them. You learn real quickly if you go to United because they had the pick at the time of the best kids in Scotland, Wales, England, and Ireland. Yeah. And you exactly. go there, you think you're, you're good. <laughs> Next thing you're playing beside guys who are really, really good. But it, it, it helps you to raise your it own game. You, you learn. On, yes. You learn as you go along. Yeah, you, with, because you're, you're, in, you're in a good class. Yeah. You know, it's a good class. But, but as you said, and I didn't realize it, that, that, that I should know that you can't go to England now until you're 18. Yeah. Well, that's that's three years missing. Yes. I mean, from the time that we went. Vital years, too. And all the too. players. I mean, look, going back over the years, nearly, well, some League of Ireland players got into the international team, but very few in relation to all the players that got in. Yeah. As you said, with Liam Brady and, and, and uh, myself, Frank Stapleton, David O'Leary, got, all, going to, all going to Arsenal. Uh, Tony Dunn came a bit later to Manchester United. Yeah. But, but, but it was there. You know, well, funny enough, when, when in my time at Manchester United, they took me over when I was 14, Eamon. Yeah. For four, only for four weeks. It couldn't take me until I was 15. I don't yeah. think so, anyway. But, but that was the connection. So that's what the scouts were doing yeah. all the time, you know, getting players, getting players. Jimmy Holmes. Remember Jimmy went to Coventry? I do, yeah. Poor Jimmy. Broke you his know, leg bad, bad. a good few players yeah. going, to di- going to different clubs. Uh, yeah. But there was, there was quite a few. Going to going to different clubs when they were fifteen, I mean, and then if that's barred now, I mean, you got you got, 
we don't see the continental clubs coming in, do we? Not really, no. Funny enough, one of the players I just mentioned there, Josh Cullen, he went and uh, played in Belgium, which is where I think Vincent yeah. Company, who's managing Burnley, first saw him. And now they say mm. Company, although his team is looking relegation bound at the moment, he did win the championship last year by a record number of points very early. Yeah. So they say he's one of the coming coaches in England. Just about um, yeah. the future, John, and the the management situation. The choices we have now for a new coach is Lee Carsley, played for around 40 times, won the European uh, Under-21 Championship with England. And then we have Steve Bruce, Neil Lennon, who managed Celtic and was successful for a while. Is it just mission impossible because of the lack of talent? That's one question. The other question is, uh, Stephen capped 26 young players. Will that experience for, say, Nathan Collins, Darrow Shea, Jason Knight, who's another kid who's shown a bit of something about him, will that help them? Oh, yeah. I think that, yeah, and yeah, they have, they have experience now, those lads, I mean, so it has yeah. to be a help. It, it, you know, it, it, it can't be anything but a help. Yeah. But getting the next manager, I mean, and I think I said to you before, if you ask me, the last thing I'd want in the world for, to save my life would be to pick a successful manager. Yeah. You, you did endorse uh, Stephen at the start, and I'm not oh, yeah. m- making a, a big deal of that. No, but no, I, I, I could endorse, I could, I could endorse them, I mean, if, if, if you put a gun to my head and say, look, you have to pick a manager, yes. I'd do it. Yes. <laughs> but I wouldn't like it to, to do it to save my life. I just, I never did. I mean, I, I, th- I might have told you the old tale, like, you know, when Ian St. John was, was going into management. Yeah. And Big Jack was going into management at the same time, around yes. about the same time. Yeah. I, I would have put my life on Ian St. John. Yeah. And I wouldn't have given Jack a, a chance. Yeah. No, absolutely. Ian St. <laughs> no. John was a great Liverpool player of the past, uh, for those uh, yeah. who are who aren't mean, old he, enough he to remember him. I didn't fancy Jack. I didn't fancy Jack at all. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer. If somebody said to me now, look, on your life, you've got to pick the successful man, I'd say, no, I don't want, don't, don't want anything to do with it. Because you, <laughs> you, you look at their records, I mean, you know. Yeah. And I, 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 over the years, and then you over the years as well, say to lads, you know, the manager's doing well. And you'd meet him, he might be one of the guys now. And what's the manager like? Yeah. Flipping rubbish. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't like, think flipping there's, there's is the word they use. A lot of chances, you say. <laughs> yeah, so, no, like, no. You talk about young, uh, the, the Irish lads with the under-21 yeah. team or the England team. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I, if you ask me, I, I'd say, well, he seems to have a good record. Yes. You know, he seems to have done well. Yeah. But this it is... only seems, though, until yeah. they actually tr- actually do it. Because it's 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 a chance you're not, you're taking unless you get an established manager, a really established manager that's going into Manchester United, and that that doesn't always happen yep. either, as we know. But I'd be saying, I mean, I just don't know if if you've asked me who would you pick for the next manager, I don't know. Right, and that's going to be the headline for this conversation because <laughs> there's not many <laughs> things you don't know, Chief. <laughs> but I, no, I, it, I don't. Man, I've always said that with managers, Eamon. I mean, there's managers who have made it that I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have given them a chance to, and vice versa. Yeah, the, the, it, yeah and the, the thing is, when you're international football, is a, a whole different ball game altogether. You don't have much the time you need with players. You're working in the dark, really. And at the moment, yeah. I, I think just, they've more time now, Eamon. I think you know yeah. if, 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 the, if the manager has has. It, the the, the 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 way to do it or the, the yeah. amb- ambitions and all the various things that go with it. I think they've more time with the players now, right? Than than they ever had, right? Yeah, and they you do. Go back to our time. When did we have time with the players? Well, we used to play on Saturday and come in and play the internationals on the Sunday. Exactly. <laughs> it changed a little bit where you could play on the Wednesday, but yeah, yeah we didn't play that many matches, so you never had the players for the, for a long time. But 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 I think I think if the manager is, is of the right stuff, Eamon. Yes. You don't have to have the players that long. No, no, no. Yeah. And especially if you have the players. Yes. But we don't. That's the big thing. We don't. So we need somebody that 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 is a good coach and actually improves them. Well, that's 
That's what everybody's looking for. I think we can agree on one thing, John. Keep our fingers crossed on it, Amy. Yeah, know? I mean, we this is about as bad as it's ever been, isn't it? And, and like we go back to the bad old days when five blazers used to pick the team. No, no, it's Amen, Amen. There's there's one improvement from our time. The manager can pick the team. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we started, Amen, we had a selection committee of That's five. Right. <laughs> right now, most people don't know anything about that because it's so long ago. Yeah, a selection committee of five, which meant if you got somebody in Ireland and put a few bob into one of the League of Ireland clubs, yeah, you could be picking the team the next within that within twelve months. Yeah. and I can reveal that I got my first cap in a hugely important match in Paris, which I'm sure you remember. We played Spain in a playoff game to get to the 1966 World Cup. Yeah. And uh, Johnny Carey was the manager. Johnny was a great player, of course, a, a real <clears throat> superman too. And he had, he found out, he didn't even know my name. <laughs> he never heard of me. But there was one guy on the selection committee who took a shine to me, apparently. And he yeah. insisted that I was in the side. So that's how you yeah, ended up yeah, yeah. lining, ne- well, lining Kerry, up next to me. Johnny Carey, one of our greats, wasn't picking the team, man. No. And one of our yeah. greatest football men. Yeah. And we had a selection committee of five. Never, none of them ever kicked the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was one of the big changes in so, our time. Things have improved a little bit in that respect. But in the future, I mean, it's serious. John, it's really very sad, isn't it, to see Irish soccer in the state it's in now. Yeah, well, we... we it, come, it comes and goes, Eamon, as you know, in football, and hopefully yeah. we, we, it'll, come, it'll come back for us. You know, hopefully. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, because, the, you know, the supporters are great supporters, and as we've seen over the years with Jack, and when we were winning matches, you know, the, the, well, we, we were regarded as the best supporters in the world, where yes. they behaved themselves and all the various yes. things that yeah. goes with it. So it's huge for the country yeah. that we do get an international team that is qualifying and competing at the highest level. Yeah, and just to underline what you just said there about Irish fans, we've, we had two outstanding performances on this, Steve, and one was we beat Scotland 3-0 in the Aviva, and the other one was we lost the game, but we lost 1-0 to France, and it was only yes. a, a great save by the French keeper that saved that header, actually, which Nathan yeah. Collins delivered to make it a one-all draw, and France are a serious team, as we saw from the result of the night, which is 14-0 against Gibraltar. So there were moments, but the fans really stuck with Stephen right through almost to the end. I, I mean, I've never yeah. seen a team of his. I think there were a few boos in the last game, but uh, generally the fans were behind him, and there was a lot of goodwill for him and a lot of respect for him. Final question, John, I'll ask you. I think that there's a place for Stephen in Irish football under 21 level, finding the talent. He's a good coach and he has a, a feel for what's happening in the game here. I think it'd be a shame if yeah. we lost him. Oh, yeah. I think he's a very, very good, good lad. I mean, yeah. I, I met him a few times, Eamon. I think he loves his football. Uh, and I, I would definitely, uh, have him doing something, but he goes back to the under 21s. Why not go back yeah. to the under 21s again? And I'm not, I'm not so, that, that might be a bit unfair on who's doing it. No, I don't know who's doing it. Uh, but he was very successful with that. I think he loves his football. Yeah. And uh, I think he'd be very good at recruiting and scouting the players for, for, for the next manager. Okay, John, as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and particularly on the stand. We're grateful to John Giles, 